Live from downtown Detroit, home of WDIV and Click on Detroit, Local 4 News at 5 starts now. Now, live at 5 o'clock, I'll show you these first images of inside Sinai Grace Hospital in Detroit, where RNs are speaking out tonight saying there's a full-blown crisis here. Also, live pictures from Washington, the briefing room at the White House. We await the president's coronavirus task force briefing to begin at any moment. But we begin with a sobering number that won't stop growing. There are now 2,856 cases of coronavirus here in our state. The lion's share of them are right here in Metro Detroit. The number of deaths has sadly risen as well. 60 people have now lost their lives to the virus. Uh, just some of today's headlines so far. Mass testing in Detroit set to begin tomorrow. That'll be at the state fairgrounds. It is by appointment only, and you do have to have a prescription for it, a script from your doctor. Also today, the Indy 500 was postponed until August. We're waiting to find out what that means for the Detroit Grand Prix, which, as you know, is held a week later. Also today, Governor Whitmer worked to clarify her stay-at-home order, and that's not all. Sean Lay getting our first look inside a Detroit hospital struggling to keep up with patients. Dr. Frank McGeorge has a sobering look at just how long this outbreak could last. But we want to begin with a Rod Maloney with Governor Whitmer's request for a federal disaster declaration. Rod. Right, it's a laundry list of things, Kimberly. Uh, the first thing the governor said was that she wants more people following the stay at home order. Uh, uh, she would like to see more people doing that because she doesn't think enough are. In the interim, she's also saying the state's behind when it comes to PPE. That's the garb that doctors and, and uh, the health care providers wear. And then she finally did say that she filled out that paperwork today to try and get the federal disaster relief. I'm hopeful that the president will grant my request for a major disaster declaration in full and within a matter of days so we can provide more services to Michiganders who need them. A number of states have already received that declaration. Meantime, the governor continued to take President Trump and his team to task when it comes to medical equipment. She says a paltry federal delivery couldn't cover one shift at one hospital. And as far as the scramble to find it... We as Americans shouldn't be bidding against one another. We should be able to harness the federal power to ensure that everyone's got what they need. That's not happened, and so we are in this position. So she asked Michiganders to step in and fill the void and donate the following items to the state. Hospital gowns, ventilators, hand sanitizer, wipes, surgical masks rated between N95 and N100, surgical gloves, and no-touch thermometers. As for the businesses opened and the considerable traffic on our roads, the governor reiterated her stay-at-home order, saying it's not a suggestion. And she clarified. If you're not a life-sustaining business, you're in violation of the law and you're needlessly exposing your employees to COVID-19. You're needlessly endangering our communities by putting more uh, pressure on a health care system that is very close to the maximum already. Now, strangely enough, she talked about landscaping companies as an example of companies that should not be doing business uh, as things stand right now. She said business licenses could be pulled. She also said there are fines in the offing for businesses that don't comply with the order. Back to you. Yeah, Rod, what, are, what is the governor saying about the state tax deadline? We know the federal tax deadline has been extended to July. What about the state? Well, we, we asked her about that, and she said that she expects to have something in the next day or two about what's going to happen there. You get the impression that they're going to have to push it forward. The question is how, and that's probably why we're seeing a delay. Sure. Okay. Rod, thanks. Well, we've been talking about flattening the curve and slowing the influx of severely ill patients, but hospitals here in, Mich in southeast Michigan continue to be overwhelmed. Everyone is asking, how long can we live like this? How long can we expect this to go on? Dr. Frank New George here with some sobering forecasts on that. Frank? Yeah, Devin and Kim. So here's the thing. Let me start out by prefacing all of this with the fact that our ability to model the trajectory of this pandemic is based on what we've seen in other countries, as well as a number of assumptions, meaning it is a prediction. And just like weather forecasts, things can change, hopefully for the better in this case. Now, this is not meant to be precise. I'm just using very rough estimates. But let's start out by looking at what happened in China. Their COVID-19 case reports started picking up mid-January. So we'll start their graph here. Now, by mid-February, about four weeks later, their cases peaked. So it looks like this. 
And since then, about another four weeks later, they have steadily decreased. So this is the curve of what China went through. Now let's consider Italy. Their cases actually started picking up roughly the end of February. That's about here. Now, about four weeks later, their cases are above China's count. So this is their trajectory. Now, here in the U.S., cases started picking up after the first week of March. And about three weeks later, we are now here, right where Italy is. And remember, this is total cases. And obviously, we have way more people than in Italy. Now, this is all the no man's land of prediction. We know how long the U.S. curve. We know how long the U.S. curve um, might go, but the problem is we don't really know whether the trajectory is going to continue on like this, or whether we're going to have a steady decrease. The big picture is, at this point in time, we may see another three weeks of increase. And then eventually, just like in China, about a one-month decrease. So that puts us at minimum about six weeks out before we are out of the point of an increase and peak somewhere out here, and then a significant decrease. So altogether, we're looking at probably three weeks to peak, and then another month or so before we come out with some kind of recovery. And that, of course, is assuming that we follow China's curve. I also want to add, of course, the United States is very different. Every state is going to have its own curve. So here in Michigan, although the numbers are very low, we started about here, and the numbers look like this, where we're just starting to have a little pickup. But ultimately, we don't know whether this is going to continue to go up, whether this is going to flatten, or whether this is or how far out it's going to go. So there's a lot of unknowns in this no man's land out here. But this is the projection, and if you look at what happened in China, we are already high, and we already have a long way to go before we start to see a plateau. All right, Doc, and that's why it was so sobering last night when Governor Whitmer said we are nowhere near the right. apex of our curve yeah, just yeah, yet. Indeed. Yeah. All right, well, tonight we're getting our first look inside a Detroit hospital struggling to handle the rush of coronavirus patients. This is the front line right now at Sinai Grace on the city's west side. Sean Lay spoke with a nurse there. Sean, we've seen a number of social media po posts from nurses in the last 24 hours. They're nervous, they're exhausted, and they're very frightened. And here at Sinai Grace, RNs, and more than just one, I've been hearing from several all day long, are sounding the alarm right now, and they say they cannot sound that alarm more loudly enough. Look, they say at this facility, it's overrun. They're in a coronavirus crisis. This according to the nurses. They say not only do they need much more staffing, but they even need more pay so they can pick up more shifts and then try to save more lives. You'll walk in the building, you'll walk on some of the floors, you'll see gowns hanging up on the doors because the people are reusing the gowns. You'll see gloves and masks in the hallways, on the tables. You might hear call lights going off because, you know, people are need to be serviced. Um, yeah, it's, it, it's, it's madness. Video from inside a regular patient floor at Sinai Grace Hospital. Gowns hanging on doors, trash, dirty floors. Housekeeping not allowed inside rooms, we're told, to reduce coronavirus risk. Exhausted nurses telling us they are expected to do it all. As nurses say, a tidal wave of sick people have overwhelmed every area of this facility. And the people are really sick. Some are so sick, she says, they are dying before their coronavirus test even comes back. She also says she has to speak up for her patients. Some are waiting on test results and are sharing rooms with people who have coronavirus. If you have a patient that has corona that's 40 years old and then a patient that's, that don't have corona that's 80, this 80 year old patient don't have a chance at life because now, you know, we infected each other due to the hospital policy or whoever approved of this, this is ridiculous. This nurse says she signed up to help people who are suffering, but her family did not. Her biggest fear right now? My biggest worry is catching this virus and taking it home to my family. I, if it was just me, I don't care. I'll come in here every day and take care of all these people. But when you have children, small children, you have infants. I have a child that's not even one year old, and I have a one-year-old. A one-year-old at home. She does not want to take coronavirus home after her shifts here. Look, we asked the DMC 
about all of these concerns all these nurses are bringing to us. They just got back to us as we got on the air, saying in part DMC hospitals have been slammed by COVID-19. In part, they're saying we are using all available space in our hospitals to care for patients. We have converted operating rooms, outpatient areas and recovery rooms into patient treatment areas to handle the surge. We are working on ways to mitigate capacity issues by moving patients from hospital to hospital within our system. Big issue here, guys. Back to you. Well, Sean, one of the most frightening things about this whole ordeal has been the number of health care workers who have come down with the virus. Uh, talk about the situation there at Sinai Grace. Yeah, because you don't want to lose that staff member who is caring for these individual coronavirus patients here. Uh, RNs are telling me that they are terrified of uh, picking up the virus and one already has is at home. He is at home recovering, but his wife now also uh, testing positive yeah. and yeah. their baby. Oh. So that's exactly yeah. what they don't want. And he's not here working. Exactly right. A double whammy on that front. We wish them the very best as well. All right, Sean. It's awful. Yeah. A Detroit Democrat is the first member of the state house to test positive for coronavirus. Uh, he's Representative Tyrone Carter. We are told he is doing well in very good spirits. Members of Michigan's House of Representatives have been informed and are being told to take precautionary measures. Carter was in the House chamber last week as they were negotiating on coronavirus funding. Stock surged for a third straight day today. The Dow jumped more than 1,300 points to cap off its biggest three-day increase since 1931. Over the past three days, the Dow is up more than 20%. Both the S&P 500 and NASDAQ finished at 6%. Staggering number of Americans filed unemployment claims last week in a pretty grim snapshot of the crippling economic effects of the virus. Alice Barr in Washington with how uh, Congress and the Federal Reserve are working to help families stay afloat. Alice. Devin, the record jobless claims come as the Senate finally approves a $2 trillion emergency relief package and congressional leaders are already looking ahead to potentially sending more direct payments to workers. The coronavirus has now claimed more than a thousand American lives. And as hospitals struggle to keep up with the rising tide of patients, a very different statistic is highlighting the economic devastation. More than three million Americans filed for unemployment last week, a record number twice as bad as expected. Don't know if I'm going to run out of money before I can start working again. The chairman of the Federal Reserve promising to prop up the economy with unprecedented emergency lending and predicting a sharp recovery. At a certain point, we will get the, the spread of the virus under control. And at that time, confidence will return. Businesses will open again. People will come back to work. There's nothing fundamentally wrong with our economy. Quite the contrary. Stocks rallied again today after the Senate approved a $2.2 trillion emergency relief package overnight. Speaker Nancy Pelosi says the House will vote tomorrow. It will pass with a strong bipartisan support. Let's do it in a way that stays focused on the kitchen tables of America's families. The bill includes billions of dollars for hospitals, small businesses, major corporate loans, and state and local governments, as well as increased unemployment benefits and $1,200 checks sent by mail or direct deposit to Americans making less than $75,000 a year. A glimmer of hope for millions of Americans searching for a lifeline. The Treasury Secretary says those direct checks will be sent out within three weeks and you don't need to sign up for anything as long as you've been working and paying taxes since 2018. In Washington, Alice Barr, Local 4. All right, Alice, a lot more to come here at 5. Let's get out to Ben. Yeah, Kevin and Devin, it feels a lot like it did yesterday, but it looks a whole lot different. We'll see how much the rain we're expecting and when it will finally shut off coming up. All right, Ben, also facts, not fear. Dr. Frank Me George back to answer critical questions about the coronavirus. Hank. It's a small family owned business struggling like so many right now. Absolutely bananas. I've never seen anything like this. This is horrible. Help me, Hank, with the story coming up new tonight on Local 4. There are businesses staying open despite the governor's executive order to close. So whether or not they think they're essential, but they really aren't, or they're just cheating, State police have a message for them.